In case you've been having trouble getting started with Worksheet 3, I thought I'd work through a few of these to help you out. All right, so we're talking about angles in circles and the arcs that are related to them. So in the first problem, it says find the measure of angle A. Well, angle A is right here. And so when you're looking at angle, it's important to look at these two points and where they are in the circle. And so this is called an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. And if it's an inscribed angle, then the arc that it intercepts, which would be the arc from B to C, is going to be twice as big as the measure of the angle. So if the measure of the arc is 90 degrees, the measure of angle A is going to be half of that, or 45 degrees. And that's all there is to it. So number two, same idea. Number three is backwards. Instead of them giving you the arc, they're giving you the angle. So if we have the arc, we cut it in half to get the angle. So what do we do if we have the angle and we want the arc? Well, we double the angle. So if the inscribed angle is 40 degrees, we're going to multiply that by 2 to get the arc. And so the arc is going to be 80 degrees. And that's it. Now the other types of angles we had with circles were the central angles. And a central angle has the vertex at the center of the circle instead of on the circle, like the last several problems. So for this, the measure of a central angle is the same or equal to the measure of the arc. So if that arc was, let's say, 30 degrees, the angle is 30 degrees. If the arc is 110 degrees, the angle is 110 degrees. So when they ask you to find the measure of angle BOC, let's move this arc out of the way. If they want the measure of angle BOC, well, we need to know what the measure of arc BC is. And if we know the measure of arc BC, then the angle will be the same thing. So if we forget about that for a minute, and let's look at the inscribed angle, because that's the information they gave us. So the inscribed angle is 55 degrees, therefore the arc will be twice that, and that's going to be 110 degrees for arc BC. And now the central angle is the same as the arc, so that means the central angle is also going to be 110 degrees. All right, uh, if you jump down and look at 7, 8, and 9, those are all quadrilaterals inscribed in circles. And we learn from that that opposite angles, so for example in number 7, angle A and angle C are opposite angles. Opposite angles are supplementary. Let me write that. Opposite angles supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So if they tell me angle C is 65, I will subtract that from 180 degrees, and that will give me angle A. So angle A is 115 degrees. Angle B and D are also opposite angles, so if I knew one of those, I could get the other one. For number 8, angle B is opposite angle D. You know what D is, so you can figure out B, etc. All right. Going down to number 10, nothing new here. They're giving you an inscribed angle. They want the measure of angle A. Now notice, side AB goes through the center of the circle. Oh. That means that AB is a diameter. And if AB is a diameter, then the arc from A through C to B is a semicircle, which is half of a circle. So half of 360 is 180 degrees. So the measure from A through C to B of that arc is 180. Now they're giving us that A to C is 100, so that leaves C to B to equal 80. Now we can find angle A, because now it's like problem number one. If arc CB is 80, then the inscribed angle is half of that, which is 40 degrees. So they're just trying to be a little tricky here. They're 
So for number 11, for example, we need to know arc AC in order to get angle B. Angle B will be half of arc AC. Well, how do we get arc AC? Well, they did tell us that from B to C is 150. And if I kept going to A, I know that's half a circle because AB is a diameter. So now I can figure out AC will be 180 minus 150, and then it's just like number 10. Um, if you look down at 13, 14, and 15, notice now we have triangles. And in all of these cases, one of the sides of the triangle is the diameter of the circle. And that means, let me do it in a different color, that the arc, for example, in number 13, from A through B to C, is 180 degrees. And that also means the arc the other way from A all the way around to C is 180 degrees. Now, look at angle B. Angle B in the triangle, it goes to point C and it goes to point A. Angle B is an inscribed angle in this circle. And it's half of that arc. So angle B is going to be one half of 180 degrees. So in all these cases, we have right angles because one of the sides of the triangle is a diameter. So it cuts the circle in half. And then the inscribed angle is half of 180, so it's 90 degrees. So let me erase all this. So now that you realize that we have right triangles in all of these cases, you should be able to find the missing angle. We have 90, angle A is 25, so now you can get angle C, because all the angles in the triangle add up to 180. So, 180 minus 90, which is 90, and then minus 25 gives you 65 degrees. So basically you're just solving the, miss, the third missing angle in the triangle when you know two of them, 90 degrees plus whatever they gave you. And so hopefully that helps you with the, the second half of the homework assignment. The first half is much more straightforward. Um, and so hopefully you don't have any questions on that.